GFCIs, you need them in your house. Hey DIY Nation, it's Jeff with Home Repair Tutor and in this quick video, I'm gonna share with you how to replace a GFCI in your bathroom. But that's not the only place you need it in your home, so check the codes in your local area. All right, stay tuned, you're gonna get a lot of great tips here. Let's get started. Before replacing an outlet, always test to make sure that there's power running to it. I highly recommend using a voltage detector like this one. It costs about 16 bucks, and any DIYer should have one in their toolbox. Simply turn on the voltage detector by pressing down on a button, or depending on the one that you have, it might be a little bit different, and then place it into the hot slot of your outlet. If it lights up, like that, that means that there's power running to this outlet. Now you can go ahead and turn off the power at the circuit breaker. Once the circuit breaker is turned off, now you can test the outlet again using your voltage detector. Stick the voltage detector into the hot slot, which is the short slot. Then just to double check in case somebody wired this outlet incorrectly, test the neutral slot and the ground slot. Nothing. Okay, good. Now I know that there's no energy coming to this. Now it's okay to unscrew the cover plate screws. Just turn them counterclockwise. Now you can remove the screws that hold the outlet to the electrical box. Again, turn the screws counterclockwise. Now what you want to do is pull the outlet out from the electrical box using the metal tabs. And make sure not to touch the side of the outlet, just in case for some reason, it's still energized. With your voltage detector, double check that there's no electricity running to the outlet by placing it on top of the hot wires. Now it's safe to, ah! Just kidding. All right, now you can pull the outlet the entire way out as far as it'll go. I'm gonna remove both hot wires. So I'm going to remove the hot wires first, then I'm going to remove the neutral wire second. And finally, I'm going to disassemble the ground wire last. I capped off all the wires and I separated them based on their pairings. So this hot and this neutral belong together and this hot and neutral belong together. Now what I need to do is figure out which set of wires are the load wires and which set are the line wires. The load wires are wires that carry electricity from this outlet downstream to other outlets. The line wires are wires that actually carry electricity from the source, so for example another outlet or the panel, to this outlet. So we need to figure out which wires are the line wires and which are the load wires. My guess is that these are the line wires. Again, the wires that are carrying electricity to the box. Why is that my guess? Well, my electric panel is below us in the garage and these set of wires are coming up. So chances are this could be the source, the electrical source, but that's not always the case. So what I'm gonna do is turn the electricity back on now that these wires are capped and away from each other and test which set actually has electricity running to them. With the electricity back on and my voltage detector handy, now I'm gonna to test to see which are the line wires and which are the loads. So check this out. Put your voltage detector up against the hot wire and sure enough, the one on the bottom here, that is the line wire. That's, these are the line wires that carry electricity into the electrical box. Now just to double check, look, nothing. No electricity going to this hot wire here. So this, these set of wires are the load wires. Before working on these wires again, make sure you turn the electricity off at the circuit breaker. Don't forget to do that. Then double check that it's off using your voltage detector. I'm gonna replace the existing GFCI with a night light slash GFCI outlet. Few things about this. Number one, it's tamper resistant. Most electrical codes require this now. So make sure you get a tamper resistant outlet or GFCI. Secondly, I chose 15 amps because it's on a 15 amp breaker. You'll always wanna choose a slim fit 
GFCI so that it can fit into a standard size electrical box. You always wanna to check to make sure that your electrical box is deep enough for the GFCI to fit into and that there's plenty of space in that box so that the wires aren't scrunched up. If your box is older and you wanna replace it, you can get a remodel box like this one here. This is 20 cubic inches, plenty deep for the GFCI to fit into. The cool part about remodel boxes is the fact that they're easy to install. They come with these little wings on them and you just tighten down the screw that's attached to the wing and eventually it cinches up to the drywall. So pretty great concept. Let's take a look at the back of the GFCI. A few things here that'll help out beginners. Number one, it's really nice that they show you how long to cut the copper wire that will fit into the terminals. Look right here. Pretty sweet, right? So they give you a gauge as to how long that wire should be. Also, they show you where the line wires, again, the wires that are coming from the power source should go. So line wires go into these slots. Here's your brass, terminal yeah that's the brass terminal and this is the silver terminal almost all GFCIs probably all of them I don't know all the ones that I've bought have a little yellow sticker that goes on the load terminals so if you don't if you only have one set of wires going into your electrical box you don't need to use the load terminals but in this case <laughs> I have both line and load terminals, so I am in fact gonna take that sticker off. It kind of feels like tearing the tag off of a mattress, like you shouldn't be doing it. But in this case, yes, I am gonna do it because I have both line and load wires. Because there are two sets of wires coming into the electrical box, I have two ground wires. What I need to do, because I only have one ground screw on the GFCI, is pigtail a third wire that I just happen to have onto these two ground wires. I'm gonna take all three ground wires, use a pair of linesman's pliers, and twist them together. Then I'm gonna add the appropriate size wire nut. Now I'm gonna create a loop using my combination strippers. Okay. Tilt that loop back just slightly to create a, a question mark. Then I'm gonna slide that loop over the ground terminal. I want the loop to be around the ground terminal so that when I tighten it clockwise, it will tighten up the loop. Now I can tighten up the ground terminal with my screwdriver. Again, always make sure that your loop is going in a clockwise direction so that when you tighten your screw or your terminal, it tightens the wire. Oh, and of course, make sure you wire the new GFCI, not like me wiring the old GFCI instead of the new one. Oh, oh my gosh. Now it's time to wire the load wires. All you do is stick the neutral into the neutral slot or you can wrap it around the terminal. In this case, I'm just going to wire it right into the slot and then tighten the screw. So white goes with silver, black goes with gold. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the line wires. So I'm gonna take the white and screw it into the silver terminal. And then finally, the last wire is the hot or black wire. I'm gonna screw that into the gold terminal. Now one thing I wanna note here, always make sure that your wires, before you enter them to, into any slot or onto any terminal, are not nicked or frayed. If they are, cut them off according to the gauge on the back of the GFCI that I showed you and get a nice fresh piece of wire. Now I'm not happy with how much the copper is showing here, so I'm gonna try to get that wire into the terminal a little bit more. Now that you're done wiring the GFCI, try to gently, as much as possible really, push the wires back into the electrical box. And then finally you can screw the outlet onto the electrical box by tightening the screws clockwise. Add your face plate and you're finished. 
And one more tip, don't over tighten the screws of the faceplate. The faceplate will crack and break. Yes, I'm talking from experience. Now it's time to turn the electricity back on and test the GFCI. Press the reset button on the GFCI. If it stays in place, your work is good and you've wired the GFCI the right way. You can also test it by pressing the test button and the reset button should pop out. But in order for the GFCI to work, you need to have the reset button pressed in. Well, that's it. That's how you wire a GFCI in your bathroom. Remember, you need GFCIs at least here in the States. You need them in bathrooms, kitchens, basements, garages, and outside. So those are a few places that you should definitely have GFCIs. If you have a question about this project, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you out. I may not have all the answers, but I'll give them my best shot. Remember, if you haven't already done so, you can do a few things for me if you, if you really enjoyed this video. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel because a new video comes out pretty much every single Friday. And you sub can subscribe to my newsletter over at homerepairtutor.com because you're gonna get a ton of great tips that'll help you save money with your own home repair projects prevent you from feeling overwhelmed, and just give you a lot of great juicy details on projects that I do week in and week out. So until the next video, I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.